Hey, it's time for the Influential Personal Brand recap of the Angie Lee episode. And I'm going solo on this one with uh, uh, AJ is out and wanted to share my thoughts on uh, the interview I did with my, my good friend, Angie Lee. And, you know, the first thing in terms of the recap that I, I hope you hear when you when you listen to the interview is the part where she says it took two and a half to three years to really even get started right so two and a half to three years to even get started like but but before she even started to see traction and i hope you don't skip over that i hope you don't miss that because because this is this is the real deal. Like no matter how many of these techniques, and there's a couple of great ones that we're going to talk about here, um, that we share, that we you know that we teach you. You know, those of you that like, if you're one of our clients, we you know we teach you the best of the best that we can. And on these interviews, like we try to draw out the most that we can from our our network and our friends and the people who are actually making stuff happen. But the reality is just you gotta at some point commit to just being here. Like you got to just commit to going the distance. And if you can't be here for five years, like if you're not in this for five years, then just go home now. I mean, like if, if, if you're not willing and prepared to pursue this dream for at least five years, then just stop now because it takes three years to even get going, like to even just get out of the gates of of just hustle and work before people even understand it and and i think you know our pod this podcast a good example like i've already hosted a podcast that had millions of downloads and starting over we're just now getting to about fifty thousand downloads and we've almost been doing this for already like another year and a half and that it's like that's a slow build for someone who's been there before but we're walking this journey with you. And I, I don't mean that to, to be, you know, discouraging. I mean that to be encouraging, to throw the gauntlet down, to help you realize that this takes time, right? So like if your first email blast didn't generate millions of dollars for you, like, you know, you sometimes see on social media and if people over promise, like don't be discouraged, stay committed to your mission, to your vision, to the dream of making an impact. Be focused on impact and influence and income will come. It, it will come. Like the stuff that we teach at Brand Builders, it absolutely works. Like it works, it works, it works, but it takes time. There's not a way to, to do it with no time. And anyone who tells you otherwise, they're just, they didn't really do it. And, they, and it's not sustainable. Like the, you, you, uh, you, we bring on people who are doing it, have done it, are the real ones making it happen day in, day out. And, you know, so that's just hopefully encouragement to you. Don't be discouraged if, you know, it's not all happening right away. Like you just can't hear that message enough. So beyond that, um, a couple takeaways for me from my, um, my pal. So I think that was, you know, that's, that's a big one, but a simple nuance that Angie didn't say uh, so directly, but it, 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 kind of inspired me or it was something she said that reminded me of this idea that it's it's important it's really important to lock this in your brain and this is an important sales marketing strategy technique mindset whatever you want to call it don't tell people what you do Tell people what you can do for them. Don't tell people what you do. Tell people what you can do for them. Like when people ask you, what do you do? Don't say, you know, I'm a real estate agent. Say, I help people sell their homes, right? Like, don't I don't tell people I'm a personal brand strategist. I tell people I help people build and monetize their personal brand. And, and that is a simple and important and clear demarcation line. Don't tell people what you do. Tell people what you can do for them. And that just 
really stuck out to me was something to, to remind myself of and to make sure that you just nailed home that you, you think about that always. Cause that's the mistake is we, we tell people what we do. We tell people like this, this is, this is what I spend my time doing. And they don't really care about that. They care about what you can do for them. So make sure you make that change mentally and, and also literally in your copy and your videos and uh, you know, anytime you're communicating in various forms. The next thing, um, and I think I love, this was something I really did take away from Angie um, in terms of, you know, selling and marketing. I think it's like a lot of times we see people when they, they feel almost like they love putting out content, but then they have to go into like sales mode and that's where they freak out or, you know, they love teaching, but then when it goes into like asking people to buy or something, they, they freak out because they have like this, like a gear shift. Like there's this mode where they think about, okay, I'm being myself normally. And then there's this moment where I go into marketing. And what Angie was saying is like, don't do that. Just, just be the same person talking passionately about what you believe in, like the, 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 the tools that you use, the products that you buy, and they don't even just have to be your products. Like she, she was saying, you know, she, a lot of times she tells people about tools that she doesn't get an affiliate fee for. She just, she just in that mode because she doesn't delineate between like, okay, I'm in sales mode versus I'm in like teaching mode. It's just learn to, to be genuine and, you know, like a, a, a verbatim thing that she said, which I thought was interesting, was she said, integrate your ads into what you're doing. So, right, like you think of ads as like, okay, I'm going to create my ad and then I, and then I have content. But in corp, if you think about it more as incorporating your ad into your content or like your content is an ad, you know, it's teaching, but it's also an ad for something, that's sort of representative of this mindset shift here of it's not like, there's you as a, as, a, as a messenger and then there's you as a marketer. It's like, it's the same thing and do them together and just talk about it, you know, that way will really, really help you. Or another thing that she said was, don't think of how can I sell more, but think about how can I be more intimate and vulnerable and authentic about telling people what I believe in. Oh, I love that. I love, I love that idea. And, and, you know, I think of it as being more of like a promoter. I, I talk about this a lot is, is just if you were going to tell your friends about a great movie you saw or a great restaurant you went to, you wouldn't like put on your sales mode and become like robo sales person. You know, you wouldn't write out a script and be like, let me memorize the script. You would, you would just tell your friends, oh my gosh, like this movie is amazing. You have to see this movie or you have to listen to this song or you, you know, like you have to go to this city that I visited. The way that you promote to your friends the things that you love and believe in is the same way that you should promote your own products. And you should have the same level of conviction in your own products that you've created as you do in the products that you use that are created by other people. And if you don't, then there's some disconnect. Like you need to work on your product more. Like there's something about your product that you're insecure about that you don't, you know, love it or you don't believe in it or you didn't design it in a way that it feels authentic. And, and the more you can do that, the more comfortable you'll be, the more persuasive you'll be, and, and the, the, the less salesy you'll be because it's, it's like you won't be just, you know, regurgitating this, this, this script. So, so don't do that. Like just promote and speak and teach from the heart and be intimate and vulnerable and authentic about what you believe in. And that's a really important tip. That's one of the things that I love about Angie. I think, you know, she's always encouraging people to market and promote, but to like not in, um, you know, just, just in an honest way, like being congruent with who you are. And I, I love that. And she's also telling the story, which was my point number one, about how long it really takes and the work it really takes. Um, so those were my top two takeaways. My, my third takeaway, which is another tactical point, which has kind of come up before, but another thing you can't hear too often is that remember, or just know in your mind that Instagram 
is not an SEO friendly growth platform because social media in general is the opposite effect of, of search engine optimization. Like when you put content out on the web and, 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 and so, so it's almost like I think about it this way, your website, i.e. your blog specifically. Okay. So your blog, your YouTube channel, and your podcast, those get better over time. The longer the content has been out, the more reach you have, the more traffic, the more valuable it is, the more new subscribers, like it, it's like a fine wine. It gets better with age. And those assets, that's one of the reasons why those assets are so important and really probably in many ways the most important. I mean, yeah, your blog, your website, your YouTube channel, they get better over time. Social media is like she said, it's better for, it's just a nurturing platform. It's a way to just keep in touch with people. But over time, the value of social media goes down. A piece of content on social media over time goes down. A piece of content on, you know, basically call it Google. Well, I mean, it's your podcast, your YouTube or your website, your blog. It goes, the value of it goes up. And so they're more SEO, they're more SEO friendly and older pieces of content carry a lot of weight and they get, you know, they get more traffic and more reach over time. So you just need to understand that, particularly if you're someone who has a huge following on social media, but you have no email list, you have no, no blog traffic, you have no podcast, you have no YouTube channel. It's like you are, you are one algorithm change away from your whole brand disappearing overnight. And all of the work that you've done to build an audience on social media, basically becoming worthless. So you better be migrating those over to these other platforms, YouTube, podcasting, and your blog quickly, which is what, you know, we, we teach that uh, in our relationship engine. Our whole phase two is all about building your digital platform, your digital ecosystem. So make sure that you're doing that. Make sure you're always doing those things. Social media is important. It's a great way to get a lot of reach quickly. You know, you can go viral, you can uh, nurture people. It's like, um, but it's not the centerpiece of your personal brand strategy. It's more of an, an outlet or redirect. It's a tributary to your, your stream, which really should be your blog. Um, and then, you know, you're dropping your podcasts and your videos from YouTube on there as well. All, all things that if you follow the Brand Builders Group way, like if you've come to our phase two event, you know, if you've been through phase one, you come to phase two or you're, you're in a monthly and we're, we're teaching you the relationship engine and you're just, you're building that out. We're doing these things organically. But every time I do one of these interviews, I become more and more convicted of like, yeah, the process we're teaching incorporates so many of these things, these real, that the, 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 the real influencers are doing. So I hope you're doing that and, and pulling that away as a tip. Most of all, you just got to stay in the game. You just got to stay in the game. You just got to keep going. You got to keep pushing. You got to know that every single day, there's someone out there waiting to hear from you. And that m most of this game is a matter of staying power. And it's the person who's committed to being here for the long term that's going to win. So I want to encourage you and invite you and challenge you to commit to be here for the long term. Commit that this is your craft. This is your mission. What you're doing with your personal brand is going to be the rest of your life. And when you do that, you'll, you'll quickly go, all right, so there's a bunch of steps I need to take, but I got the rest of my life, you know, to work towards it. So um, we'll just... We'll just start plugging away, and that's what we want to help uh, encourage you to do, whether uh, we get a chance to call. You know, hopefully you'll do a free call with us. If you haven't, at some point we want to talk to you. Hopefully we get to see you at one of our events. Or, you know, if for right now, just stay plugged into the podcast and follow me on social uh, at Rory Vaden on uh, Instagram and most of my other platforms, and just, just stay connected so we can encourage you along your journey. Thanks for being here. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.